Hey everyone, now that the preseason has started and the season's back underway, we're back to making some videos and I'm going to take the preseason to take an opportunity to evaluate some people who are either rookies or new or we haven't quite seen play and I'm starting off with Montrevious Adams of the Green Bay Packers. He was a pretty exciting pick, I think, as a Packer fan last year and then he got injured so we didn't get to see too much of him so I'm making this video off of only his first preseason game but just to kind of get an idea of how he's doing so you have an idea of like how the Packers are using him and how he did it in his first game looking at this uh, this is just kind of a mapping now I only watched till kind of the beginning of the third quarter they seem to play him pretty much the whole game but this is just a summary of a few things that I noticed and that's kind of just tracked his snaps his fastest get off and leverage now snaps total um i showed that it, where he lined up in two technique three technique zero technique and one technique um they primarily used them as a two technique just to get off the snap and kind of man up against the guard and take him out maybe play some two gap scheme and then he played for leverage as you can see for most of the game pretty well um, he, when you watch him, and I'll show you clips, he's a really good run defender, and they used him as that. He's powerful, he can get to where he's going, he's got a strong base <clears throat> frame, so even when he lost leverage, he was still able to kind of get to where he needed to go, because he's a bigger guy, but he could do a little de better in the leverage department, but for the most part, he looked pretty solid in that. And then, the fastest get off, now, the Packers drafted him from my understanding um, out of Auburn was because he was incredibly quick off the ball he had a great first step and he was a good penetrator because that because he's got a strong base so if you line him up in the three technique and you shoot him through a gap fast it can be a really disruptive play I was pretty surprised to see that the Packers used him in the two technique most of the game um, and then his second most utilized technique was the, six, was the three technique but um, as you'll see throughout these clips, uh, you would have thought they would have used them in the three technique, but they didn't. But when when I say fastest get off, I mean he was literally the first defender up and off the ball. And now I know it only says 25%. Now, the difference between, like, he was fastest tied with people for a lot of plays. So more than 25%, but I just wanted to log genuinely when he was the first person up and off the snap all right on this first play i just want to show you how he plays with good strength and you'll notice it's just his outside zone off the snap he comes up with good leverage and he's set but they're running to the outside and the guard immediately sets to his outside so on this play he's beat but if you notice he plays with such good leverage and has good strength he's able to back the guard into the gap Derek Henry wants to shoot and Quentin Spain kind of recovers but then he's able to if you look twist his base after being twisted and still come around and get good leverage on play now Quentin Spain's a good guard and that's a really impressive play to get beat off the snap from a position standpoint and have the strength and speed to to back up the guard into the hole before it's hit and twist the guard out of position now i want to show this play um to demonstrate how he's pretty athletic and able to recover and adapt to a play mid play and so this ends up being a pass play but first look it looks like a run play and again he said in the two technique over the guard and you'll notice off the snap he short sets he almost pretty much doesn't take a step and immediately punches out his arms as you can see the guards backing up right here and he's already fully extended his arm now usually when um, a defensive lineman does that he's expecting a run play so he's he's short setting he's gonna just pretty much plant his anchor and throw out his arms and and try to try to gain quicker leverage on the offensive lineman and by doing that he he can have power and kind of control the gap in the run but here as you notice the guard comes out for the block and 
or backs up for the pass block. And the impressive thing that you need to note about this in terms of an athleticism standpoint is that when he short sets there, he's usually leaning forward. It's really hard to not fall just forward uh, because you're expecting that. And it's really impressive that he sets up, even though it's not uh, he he's not actually met with the block, and to keep his balance and then move forward in the play. And then the next thing he does so well in this play, he realizes he's not going to gain leverage. But right there, if you see, he's able to disengage from the blocker here. And with Mariota scrambling, he's trying to follow him. Now, if Dean Lowry weren't in the way, he could run and cover that play. We have another play here where he's just lined up in the two technique. And just good get off good leverage and again the guard has position kind of on him but he again is able to use his strength and see how he just can't budge him off the line of scrimmage and he can still move laterally and make the play and again if, if gilbert wasn't there he could come over and make that tackle just a quick play right here again lined up the two technique and it's you know, just a pass play. He doesn't affect it by it, but I just want to show you his get off. And look at that power right here. Meet at the line of scrimmage, and he is holding at the line very well. And, you know, again, showing good NFL power. Now, this is one of the plays people notice him for. He's right here. And it's just a run straight to his gap. And off the snap, you'll see that he comes off with good burst and leverage and then he kind of loses it here but he's able to throw the guard Quentin Spain right off of him and you saw in the last play how strong he is he does give way a little bit here but that's so that he can shed he knows where Derrick Henry is coming from throws him aside and makes a tackle and that's a really good goal line play all right, all those plays were on the first drive. Here we're on the second drive. Opening play of the drive, the Titans line up with an eye back and two tight ends. And you'll see in this play, they shift the tight end in motion. Now they had overloaded the other side, and at that point he was in the two gap. Now they shift motion, and this is an assumed run play to the side of the motion. And you'll see that Green Bay reacts by shifting him over to the zero gap. The zero technique and over the center and by doing this they plan that you can tell that they want to use him the way that I talked about earlier the way we expect they drafted him where his a quick get off he can shoot and penetrate and be strong and that's exactly what happens in this play here the only thing is they run a naked bootleg play action but if you see right off the snap he's the fastest off the snap and he immediately makes contact with good leverage and he gets in between here now, if this play is to running to the outside, he can make a play. Look at that penetration, or at least he's holding the gap. Now, it is a naked bootleg, but again, this goes back to how I expected them to utilize him more and more, and it just shows he's really good, he's fast, he's got a strong play, and he can get in those gaps. In the very next play, again, he's lined up. And I just want to show this because to show his power, lined up over the guard, he just starts off he actually doesn't have the best of leverage but he gets his hand on him and watch him just back this guard up just pure strength and he's not much of a pass rusher he does have some moves um, he's much better run defender but watch him here as he just backs that guy straight up into the quarterback and that's the kind of power you want to see from him and that's one thing that gets you really excited about him and I just showed a play where he demonstrated really good power uh, and this play I'm going to show where he doesn't necessarily. He's lined right here in two technique again over the guard. And it can be a little confusing to see him where he has such good power and can move a defender back and then get pushed out of the hole completely like this. Now, I know that he is initially... Wait, is he initially double teamed? Uh, kind of. Not Not in the way that should stop him and you'll see the tackle and the guard meet him right here but watch real quickly how he loses leverage now the tackle who's pushing him back doesn't really have good leverage at all I mean he's not at, he's not lower than him. he's not at his hips and that's what I'm confused about where he doesn't demonstrate the most consistency now he's 
His percentage was really good in the game in terms of maintaining his and standing his ground. But, you know, to be a starter, to be a pro bowler, we, you need to be consistent all the time. And he gets just gets backed up there by a, a tackle who doesn't really have much leverage. And so that's one thing that, you know, you wonder about going into the season. Now, I know I talked about how he's a good run defender and not the best pass rusher. And this play will kind of show it to you. But the one thing that... You know, he shows some intangibles. Is you know, an NFL play, you know, not not you're you're gonna do your assignment, but then you know the great ones are able to react to a play after the fact and maybe break their assignment a little bit, or at least make a play. And he's lined up right here. This is a pass play, and I just want you to notice he again not the best pass rusher. He kind of sets up and plans to turn now. He knows he's not going to beat this guy. He's lined up just straight up over the guard. And it, the play is designed to free up space for the outside rusher. And so he's not really supposed to do a whole lot in terms of blocking this guy's lane, whether he wants to go this way or this way. He just needs to occupy the guard to allow space for this guy. And one thing he knows is he's not going to beat them. But he's watching Blaine Gabbert's eyes. And... Gabbert is just staring down his receiver over here. And he knows that. And he knows that he's all his rusher's already gotten past the lane, so he can start to move over. And he just wants to get in the passing lane here. And as you can see, he just runs over just to get in the lane. And, you know, I'm not sure if he tips this, but if you look at the ball, it kind of wobbles a little bit. But he gets in the lane and gets his hands up, and I think he actually deflects that ball. And that's just something where, again, you know, he fulfills his assignment. And then after the fact, you know, it's really good recognition on the play to disrupt the pass. And that's just, that's one thing that, you know, if he's not great at, he can at least be something. And that's really promising for uh, his future. This is another pass rush play. And you'll see he's lined up here in two technique. And again, you know, he's not always going to break through and beat the line. But I wanted to show this play because of a few reasons. One, he gets a good get off. And he has good leverage here. Now, one thing right there. Now that he's got leverage in a lane, he has a nice swim move. And then after that, the guard recovers. And then he has a spin move. And the reason I wanted to show this is to show that he's not just the guy that will line up and just either back you back or do nothing. He has that swim move there. And then once it's countered, he has, a, he has a spin move. And so he's got moves for the pass rush. And you can tell he's got all the strength and ability in the world to to make this happen. It's just a matter of, you know, practicing it and going forward. You, he's got these moves and he's aware that he needs to use the counter and it's in his arsenal. So, you know, by the end of the year, not only is he already a really good run defender, but if he can bust this out constantly then he could be an absolute force. And this play just kind of shows some inconsistency development needs to work on. And it when again, when I talk about why he's drafted as a fast penetrator and a disruptive player, he's clearly lined up, um, I think that's the, is that the one gap? Basically just between the guard and the center. And you can tell he thinks that this is going to be an outside zone over this way. The tight end lined up on the outside, and he's lined up to penetrate. I mean, that's his job in this play. And, you know, one of the reasons he has such a quick get-off is anticipation. And here, you know, it just he gets a little of the best of him, and he has some offsides. And in that manner, you know, you want to see that he's more consistent about not being offsides in an assignment like this. This play is more important because it kind of shows, again, when I talk about as a penetrator and a quick get off, why I expect how I expect him to use this way and why I was surprised he was only using a two technique. But you'll see before this snap, Tennessee takes the tight end off off the line of scrimmage and puts him in motion. Now, when this occurs, Green Bay's thinking that he is going to they're going to run to the outside here now, and so. Real quickly, um, Montrevious Adams switches to move to um, the outside shoulder of the guard in anticipation of trying to penetrate and fill this gap. They move him back. He now goes back to in between the guard and the center, assuming the play is going to run to the outside, and again, used as a penetrator. And this is why they drafted him again, because this is really effective against zone. 
if you think about the way the offensive line moves, yeah, he in this in this guard he lines he has to move back over the guard and tackle to kind of get in between here and, and tackle this gap. But once it goes to the other side, he moves shifts back over. You know, he's technically the backside pursuit, and he just he's just trying to get shoot through this gap and get to this running back. And off the snap, you can tell he's very successful. Even though he gets cut block, he's able to stay on his feet again. Balance, balance is so important on the defense. Whether you're talking about um, the play I showed very early in this video where he short sets and keeps his balance and is able to maintain good contact. We're here where they try to cut him, he stays on his feet. If a lineman's not on his feet, he's not he's not worth anything to the team. And this is such a good play. Get off the snap, split the guard in the center, keep his balance. Now he doesn't make the tackle, but he pretty much disrupts this play and forces a change in back. And the linebackers should be there to support. But this is a really good play and what you'll notice is really dominant defensemen are able to maintain their balance because that's just so important. And those tight windows in the trenches and those tight gaps, if you have good balance, you're always going to be a factor. This is just a real quick run play. Again, he's landing two technique, and it's just a good look at the power. He's made the line of scrimmage, good leverage, doesn't get backed up. He's the deepest defensive lineman, makes a nice shed and a nice run tackle. Similar to the play just before, he's lined up right here. Another good uh, get off with good stacking ability, shed, tackle. Again, another great play on his end. So this is about the end of my video. I just, there's one more play I want to show. And this is one of those plays where he just, you know, there's a little bit of inconsistency sometimes in his play. Where here you see he gets good leverage off the snap and then just gets blown off the ball. And, you know, when we go back to it, when you talk, when I, you know, finish my summary about him in this game, this is one of those things where he has great leverage, he has great support, and then the guard is able to reset his feet and then just flop him over. And this is just not the kind of play you'll see from a pro bowler necessarily. But, you know, this happens, and this is just one of the things where, you know, this is his first preseason game. And in that regard, you know, he... he has so much more time to develop but from everything I showed you you can see his strengths and his weaknesses this far you know weaknesses just being that he needs to be more consistent and he needs to develop his pass rush skills if that's how the Packers plan to use him you know if they only plan to use him you know two, two technique against the run defense like they did you know he'll be a good player but you know if, if they want to if he wants to be a Pro Bowl and they want to use him for his versatility, he's going to have to develop the other aspects of his game. And you know, as you can see, he is so strong. And once he gets his body against a half man, you can tell he's going to win that battle. He's strong enough. He has great hands. He's got great power. And he's got really good speed. I mean, laterally, as you saw him working through the zones and working through pass rush, he's always able to keep up with running backs and quarterbacks as they flush to the outside. And, you know, for, as a first start, this was a pretty impressive performance because the Tennessee has a really good offensive line. And I know that some of these later videos are against backups, but he the earlier plays were against the starting line for the titans including quentin spain and he, he's got the power and that's where everything starts off up front you need to have the power and you need to have balance you need to be able to be on your feet so that you can make a play and you know you need to have power to be able to shed people or get through these holes and he's got all of that so this was a really promising performance for him and you know i the, he's going he's probably going to play quite a bit for the Packers this year. He's not just a role player, I think. I think he could actually genuinely get some starter time and share a lot of carries. The Packers have Muhammad Wilkerson and Kenny Clark and Mike Daniels, um, so that's a hard line to break. But, you know, he could fit where Muhammad Wilkerson would play, um, kind of on the end there and in this technique. If he just keeps developing, again, this is just preseason game one, 
but he, he shows a lot of promise and you know he missed all of last year so he's just getting back into football shape so going forward um i think this was a great performance i think that he's going to become a pretty heavy rotational player at least by the end of this year you know hope and i think he can get in as er like as early as week one and be a influence but he might you know well Muhammad wilkerson is a great player but he left new york for a reason um, and if he doesn't put in, he did sign a one-year contract, prove it, or get out. And so in that regard, maybe he does perform well for the Packers. But regardless, you know, the Eagles formula is you can never have enough good defensive linemen because you just got to keep coming after them by the fourth quarter. This is very promising for the Packers because, you know, they don't just have to play Wilkerson, Daniels, and um, Kenny Clark. They can... They can rotate some players. You know, Dean Lowry's going to get in there, and you see here. Now, Montrevious Adams is looking like he's up to the task. So, this is very promising for the Packers' defense. Having Mike Pettin is huge. Getting rid of Dom Capers is so exciting for this defense. And adding Mike Pettin, now you get, you're proving that you have some defensive depth on the line. And this could be a really good, really dangerous defense to mess with going forward. But, all in all, from what I see... It, general summary is Montrevious looks like he's already ready to take on a pretty heavy role and could be a starter by the end of the year and I, I it looks like he might be a pretty good draft pick for the Packers assuming he stays healthy as always thank you for watching this episode and if you like my content and haven't yet please subscribe to the channel I plan to be releasing videos as often as I possibly can because ultimately I want to make a career out of this, whether it be self-supporting through YouTube videos like this or something else happens, I get picked up somewhere along the way. And if you like my videos and want to support me financially to continue to do this as often as I possibly can, my Patreon account's up to the top right. And if there's anything that you want me to do a video of or explain or answer, just leave in the comment section and I will be sure to get a video out as soon as I can on that. And I just want to again thank you so much for your support and moving forward hopefully this can become a good thing.